Yeah, uh, before you, you start, I, I will just uh, welcome you all again to the next part of, of this seminar. Uh, and we have our colleagues from uh, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung that will present uh, a little bit uh, around their kind of initiative of, of these Nordic projects. Uh, Gabriele Baumann is uh, head of, uh, of the CAS Nordic uh, Countries project. Uh, she has uh, been working uh, in Stockholm from 2019, but before that she has been in Kyiv and Berlin as well, working with different European projects. And uh, Richard Forsén is a research associate and, and project coordinator for, for the Nordic countries. So I give the floor to you, Gabriela. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maria and uh, dear speakers and participants. Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, the University of Greenland, Maria Krian and Rasmus Leander Nielsen, as well as HOS Analysis and Malo Media for a very fruitful cooperation on this first foreign and security opinion poll in Greenland. And I'm so sad I cannot be with you right now in presence. And uh, I would have loved to have coffee with you all and, uh, of course, with the politicians you just, uh, uh, you just had in the uh, former session, which was really uh, exciting to listen to. So thank you for organizing uh, this event as well. Uh, let me say a few words about our foundation, the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, and why we were interested in funding the survey. The Konrad Adenauer Stiftung is a German non-profit organization named after Konrad Adenauer, the first chancellor of West Germany after World War II. As we are a political foundation, we are affiliated with a political party, the German Christian Democratic Union, CDU. The federal elections in Germany will be held this September and we hope, of course, that the CDU will again lead the government, as it did with Angela Merkel during the last 16 years. I'm saying this because the budget we spend on our projects does not come from the party itself, but depends on the voting results. After the elections, it will be, uh, the budget will be distributed among all political foundations by the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development according to the outcome. We have uh, six political foundations in Germany right now and might be seven after the next uh, elections. And the money we get from, uh, for, for our projects in Greenland comes from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Germany. As a think tank with headquarters in Berlin, we are rated 15th among the world most influential and number four within the European Union. And throughout the last 60 years, we have established a network of foreign offices around the world, which now amount to 120, 120 offices all over the world. And the office in Stockholm, as you just mentioned, Maria, has been established quite recently um, end of 2019 and is covering the five Nordic countries, including Greenland. Our goal is to strengthen European and international strategic partnership through dialogue on various policy fields. We produce reports and studies, organize seminars and conferences together with partner organizations like the Greenlandic University the University of Greenland, and also with experts. Our most important peer groups are politicians, government officials, students, experts, civil society, and media. We need analyses and surveys like the Greenlandic one as means to stimulate debates between experts, politicians, and young people. I'm very happy that this debate took and takes place today in NUC and virtually via MS Teams. And as I said, it's very was really interesting to, to listen to the debate among the politicians because this is what you cannot hear every, every day. So we have done, um, as was mentioned also before, very similar foreign opinion polls on Norway and Iceland last year. 
my colleague Richard Fossen, who is our research associate in Stockholm, he will share some comparative with you figures. But what we think might be interesting uh, for you today. So I will then hand over to Ricket now. And as whenever you have questions, please, I would be pleased to to answer them later on. Thank you, Richard. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Gabriela. Uh, let's see if I can uh, show up. Yes, I'm. I've shown up. I hope everybody can see the the PowerPoint presentation that I think I'm controlling here. Uh, let's see now. So uh, quickly, uh, as Gabriela said previously, uh, some words over uh, about why KS has uh, initiated and uh, financially supported these free foreign policy opinion polls in. Uh, Iceland, Greenland, and Norway. Uh, to put it very shortly, it's uh, it's part of the KES goal to stimulate domestic and international dialogue, especially on issues which are common to so many of us across uh, national borders. And we were especially interested in uh, trying to facilitate some kind of comparative discussion, uh, not uh, only discussion domestically uh, within Greenland, for instance, but between uh, uh, the EEA states of Norway and Iceland, and uh, as uh, um, Mrs. Hammond said earlier in the debate, the EU OCT of, of, of Greenland. But uh, before um, showing you some direct comparisons in how people answered in uh, Norway and Greenland, uh, some quick um, reservations. First and foremost, uh, as Re Erasmus uh, mentioned earlier, many questions in the Greenlandic uh, survey were quite directly um, inspired by a previous Norwegian study uh, from NUPI, the Norwegian uh, Foreign uh, Policy uh, Institute, uh, which was carried out uh, in the beginning of the first half of 2020. But not all questions were, uh, not all questions, unfortunately, or all answers as a result as well, are directly comparable as um, the methodology and the questions, how the questions are asked are a little bit different sometimes from one uh, survey to the next, but I will show you in a second uh, an example of this. Uh, this does not mean that, that uh, specific uh, comparative questions cannot be asked, but such comparisons in some cases for some questions might require a more deeper qualitative uh, comparison, another comparison of number versus number. Uh, and for that, we have planned a dedicated comparative online discussion where all three author groups from Norway, Iceland, and Greenland are present for March 23rd. Um, so we, we would love to uh, to see to uh, have you join us uh, during that dedicated 75-minute discussion with authors and researchers themselves. Uh, another uh, another uh, reservation is unfortunately that the Icelandic opinion poll is uh, finished, but it's still not completely uh, finished in, when it comes to being published, which means that this comparison will uh, merely be between the Norwegian and the Greenlandic results. Uh, firstly, uh, an example of results which in some ways are might be comparable, but where the method, like the methodology and the research design of the questions themselves are not directly comparable. Um, on your right, you see uh, one of the questions from uh, Maria's and Rasmus' uh, uh, Greenlandic study, um, asking uh, respondents if they would vote for EU membership if it was a new referendum today, where 40% answered yes. On the left, you see what in my opinion, is probably the most comparable question which was asked in the Norwegian study. But as you might see, the, the question is asked slightly differently. Uh, and the question is more specifically, if the current agreement between Norway and the EU, the EEA agreement, would, should end, what would you think would be the best new agreement between Norway and the, and the EU? Um, and in this case, 25%, slightly less, of respondents answered that they would actually want to see Norway as a member of the EU, uh, while a w quite large uh, percentage of uh, slightly more than 40% would want to see a less comprehensive agreement than the current EA agreement. Uh, but as a result, only slightly less than 20% said that they would 
want to see no agreement with the EU whatsoever. So as you might see here, the, the results are not com directly comparable. Uh, the next comparison is uh, quite directly, well, uh, quite a, a lot easier to make, and it's uh, concerns of attitudes towards for foreign investments. And here, the major conclusion that I would uh, I would uh, personally uh, make is that, uh, like Rasmus, I think earlier mentioned, the salience of discussion in Greenland about how to how Greenland should uh, should um, should take a stance when it comes to foreign investments probably leads to uh, quite quite a lot of uh, difference w uh, in comparison to Norway when it comes to the, the nature of a domestic political debate because only slightly more than six percent of Greenlanders who answered the survey said that they were negative or very negative towards foreign investments which is quite small in comparison to the Norwegian results in a way where um, around 25% of respondents actually said that they were either fairly negative or very negative towards foreign direct investment. At the same time, almost half of the Norwegians who answered the survey uh, were, as we say in Swedish, lagom. they were a little bit in the middle of the road. They, uh, they, uh, they said that they were both, in a very diplomatic way, they were both positive and negative aspects towards foreign direct investment while at the same time 25% were either positive or very positive. So this is quite an interesting comparison towards Greenland, where more than half of respondents were either positive or very positive towards foreign direct investments, which might give reason to say that Greenland is open for business. Next, uh, an interesting comparison also regards the respondents' attitudes towards NATO as an alliance and if the respondents think that NATO is a positive or negative alliance. Uh, and this, this question, it, the results were, were, were quite, quite interesting, um, where a very small percentage of Greenlandic respondents answered that they thought that NATO was overall a negative alliance, slightly less than 3%, in comparison to the Norwegian respondents, where around 10% of respondents were negative overall towards the uh, NATO, uh, there is quite a sizable, uh, around 20-25% uh, part of both respondents, which are somewhat neutral uh, or unsure when it comes to uh, if they think NATO is more positive than negative. But overall, in both countries, a uh, clear majority support saw NATO as a positive alliance, which is interesting. Another comparison, which is not 100% uh, maybe comparable because the questions are different, is the attitudes towards China and whether the respondents think that Greenland or Norway slash the Europe should follow the US um, political stance towards China. In the Greenlandic survey, results on the right, 81% um, of respondents were of opinion that uh, Greenland should not follow U.S. stance or U.S. politics towards China. While the Norwe Norwegian survey occurred out earlier in 2020, um, actually it led to quite interesting almost 50-50 split between respondents who either said yes or no to whether Norway and Europe should follow U.S. policy with a tougher stance on China. Uh, worth noting here is that the Norwegian question, in other words, specified that the U.S. policy was a tougher policy or a tougher stance. So maybe not completely comparable, but still the results are so different that it's quite interesting to discuss. And I think this is the last, uh, if I remember correctly, the last uh, comparison that we're going to make is whether uh, the respondent thinks that China's influence the world is overall a positive or negative thing, given that, as the qu both questions stipulate, China's influence is increasing. In this case, uh, the Greenlandic study carried out by Rasmus and Maria, almost 70% were of opinion that Greenland should protect its economy ahead of welcoming investments from China. And this was actually quite comparable to the Norwegian results in where also around 65% of respondents wanted the Norwegian economy to be protected against Chinese investments. So uh, here's a case where, in my view, actually the results are quite comparable, interestingly enough. 
So, uh, before rounding off, um, just a reminder that uh, we are planning a uh, online discussion with all free uh, studies uh, and author groups as soon as the Vice Atlantic study is published from March 23rd, and uh, we will uh, uh, publish more information about this in our social media channels on Facebook, uh, where you can follow us under KAS Nordics, or on our homepage. Uh, for the CAS Nordic countries. Uh, thank you. That was everything for us. Uh, and uh, over back to the studio. Uh, thank you very much, Gabriela and, and Richard, uh, for your overview. And, and the comparisons made by the Norwegian case. Is there any questions? Uh, or? Just a concluding remarks, and then we we'll take some more coffee. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> if I can remember our program correctly. Oh, yeah. okay, um, uh, first of all, thank you very much to, um, to uh, Rekard and, and Gabrielle. Uh, for for starting this round of surveys around different Nordic countries, um, I think the plan is is not only going to be Norway, Greenland, and Iceland, but eventually also some other countries. So we do have some comparative measures and um, and different findings. It it was quite a d dilemma what to change from the Norwegian survey into a, a, a Greenlandic context, and we, it also went back and forth with uh, with HOS analysis um, for for in, in diff three different languages sometimes to to compare that. But that's um, that's how it worked. But but I think in 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 uh, in conclusion that that this should only be seen as a start of a process of trying to get better data on the voter level because we hear politicians talk in the media once once uh, in a while not that unfortunately not that much about foreign policy but I also think that's both uh, KNR and and Smitjak's fault that they seem to outsource this to their journalists who sits in Denmark and then they call the Royal Defense Academy with what Jon and, and those guys think. So, so hopefully we can also get a, a better voice from, um, from, from the voters, from this institution, the university, to, to try to understand better because we often get asked when international journalists call us, what do Greenlanders think about this and this and this? And we just... Oh dear Lord, well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and we actually don't know because we haven't done the surveys very often. So we, 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 we take it from what is the debate in, 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 in Simitiak uh, underneath the articles or, or what Alekha or Justus are saying in Parliament. Uh, once a year they have a very long discussion in Institute of sometimes six hours about the, the yearly um, red girls, what's red girls in English? Uh, the, 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 this, this 80 pages report from the Foreign uh, Department of Foreign Affairs about the state of of uh, foreign relations in in Greenland. That is really interesting. And then the politician discussed that for for roughly six hours, I think. Last time, last two times I checked, it was, it was a very long discussion. But apart, apart from that, is not something that happens uh, that often. Um, so we hope maybe in the election campaign you will also talk a little bit about foreign relations because there are interesting things going on in the Arctic with uh, with the US, with China, with Russia, with but also big questions: how should the Arctic Council evolve? Something that that Greenland prioritizes very much, and and I think there's there's. Um, political agreement that the voice in the Arctic Council should be much more the Greenlandic voice rather than some abstract version of, of the Kingdom of Denmark. I um, think that that's, that's uh, we can, can start a, a big debate about that question in, in this room per, per se. But again, we, we're hoping that um, Maria and I, but also uh, other scholars, uh, will get funding somehow because it is somewhat expensive to do these surveys. But but something we can start and 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 get funding for doing 
more surveys and also make more specific surveys about uh, NASAC, about uh, the Illulicet declaration, or uh, because we, we have been torn between making it comparative relevant, the question we have been posing, and uh, and also getting the Greenlandic context into to place. Uh, I think we will have um, 10 minutes coffee break uh, also for networking and then uh, we will take questions uh, about the survey, um, but also Justus and Alge is still here, so if you have more questions to the politician, uh, you're more than welcome to, to, to post them to, to them. Um, so see you in 10 minutes. Please get some coffee and uh, be back.